Okay, tell the truth. Are you spending too much time on social media creating content because that's what you're supposed to do, but you're just not seeing the clients come in the door? You need post with purpose. Our social media membership site made just for estheticians and spa owners that will help you get crystal clear on what to say and when and teach you our content creation system that'll have you knocking out a month's worth of content, yes, a month in just a couple of hours. Sound good? Check out our $7 for seven day trial and take back your time today. All right, Danielle, welcome back to the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. This is going to be a fun spa social beats episode. We're going to give a little look into the internal uh, workings of our company because we're talking about the difference between a social media manager and a social media VA. And you are the social media manager here at Addo Aesthetics. So I wanted to just kind of highlight what it is that you actually do versus what a VA would do. So when when spas and estheticians are looking at getting that help for social media, do they need a social media manager or do they need a social media VA? Um, so what is it exactly that you do here? <laughs> yeah, so well, first and I'll just say like, because to kind of your your question leading into that, should I do social media VA or a social media manager? Who should I look for? Um, it totally depends on where you're at. And that's where I think maybe me sharing kind of what I do will be helpful. But I'll just say from a social media management standpoint, sometimes it's more helpful to start with the VA just to get your foot, you know, or your toes in the water with like outsourcing. And then you can kind of move up to a social media manager if outsourcing is a brand new field for you. Um, social media VA is like one of the easiest places to get started. But the main difference between the two is really the strategy element. Um, a social media manager is going to be much more heavily tied into the guidance of your content strategy on your social media channels. They're going to be looking at your brand messaging and your uh, your goals and your bigger vision for your business. And then crafting that into a strategy that says, what content do we need to be sharing to achieve those goals? And how do we go about diffusing the brand message down into these bite-sized pieces of content while still keeping everything very consistent? That is a much heavier lean on strategy than a social media VA whose main job is to do... Uh, scheduling, um, keeping up with maybe comments in your inbox on social media, your DMs, maybe they're doing some of that customer service liaison work, um, which definitely has its own load and its own right. And you have to really be well with the conversing element because for instance, what I do as a social media manager, I don't do any commenting on the page. I don't do any engagement. That's all Christy, who is, you know, much more than a VA, she does a lot of customer forward facing things, but she also takes care of the strategy or the uh, scheduling while I take care of the strategy. I do my piece first where I kind of create all the content, come up with the game plan, curate the hashtags, and then I pass that off to her and she does the scheduling and then she takes it from there. Any engagement that's happening, any um, just those forward facing things she's been taking care of. So that's kind of the main difference. Yeah. And I, I think what's really interesting and important to note is that as you grow the, this role will continue to grow, right? Because, you know, I'm thinking about our social strategy and, and we had a great social strategy that got us to a certain point. And then we went through a rebrand and it's like, okay, we need to reevaluate and see what it is that we're wanting to accomplish. And we kind of created that. And then you totally revised it and tweaked it to make it our own. So that's, if you are a spa and you're wanting a social media manager, like the KPIs that you might be looking at is like, yes, you want follows, right? You want to build your audience, but you're, you're ultimately wanting to build the amount of clients that are coming in, right? People don't, it, it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 followers, if you have zero clients, right? I'd rather have 1,000 followers and 300 clients than 
10,000 and none, right? So it's, it's the social media manager's job to understand your brand, what you stand for, know how to align that with the colors, the language, the speaking to the language of your ideal client, like all of those pieces are very, very heavy in, in communication. So they, that social media manager needs to work with you as the owner to have a very clear idea of what's the vision of your company? Who are you talking to? Who's your ideal client? What are your core values? Like we've got to know all of these things to be able to have the right message so that you are attracting the right person. A social media VA, they're probably, they're probably great with Canva. They are decent with tech, able to upload things. And again, like you can go in micro steps. That's, I think, Danielle, what you were saying right at the beginning is like, you don't have to go directly like, oh, well, I clearly just need a social media manager. You might be the social media manager. Mm -hmm. You know? You might be that person and you hire a VA and once you get your company to a certain level financially that you're able to invest in a social media manager because you get what you pay for, then you, then you say, okay, I'm going to pass this off to you. I'm going to take off my social media manager hat and let you wear that and I'm going to step a little bit more into the role of CEO or owner of the company. So Danielle, could you, if someone's looking for a social media manager, what would they put in a job posting versus a VA? I think a VA, we have some clarity, but like to look for a social media manager, what are they looking for? I would say a clear understanding of communications and branding, like a lot of what you mentioned. And, and that is not something I would ever put on a VA um, job description, just because that's not inherently what VAs do. They're very like tactical, getting tasks done um, versus the social media manager with that strategic piece. I think really highlighting the understanding of communication, of branding, um, strategic planning, and making sure that someone can adopt your voice, that they have the skill set around adopting brand voice and maybe writing for other brands. Copywriting skills are going to be important there. Um, and really outlining what it is you're needing help with. So for instance, you kind of um, touched on it a bit with knowing who your ideal client is. Part of my job as a social media manager is not just to grow the accounts or to um, increase clicks over to the website, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure that those clicks are actually people who are qualified to be good students and clients and customers. Like the, the clicks mean nothing if I'm dr driving the wrong people there, right? So having that kind of reverse engineered standpoint of maybe someone who can help me get really clear on what our brand messaging is or is very... Um, just, I would say copywriting is going to be a big, a big element in a job description there and really infusing what your brand is about in that job description. Like, who are you looking forward to a fit to work with? Because if you're stepping into the CEO and passing off social media management, I think a lot of people think they're just going to go, Oh, I'm done with social media. Like you're handling it now. And it's like, no, no, no. Your social media manager is going to ask things of you just like, I so often say, hey, Danielle, I need these kind of pictures from you because this is what I'm planning. I need you to film a video on this. I need you to film a couple clips here. There's going to be that back and forth. So you want to make sure that person's a good personality fit with you as well. So clear communication, open communication, and kind of fits your brand and company culture. Yeah. But the, the piece that I love is that I tell you what my end goal is, what I want, what I need you tell me what you need from me. And that makes my life so much easier. So, so for like a test project, um, because I'm, I'm a big, uh, supporter of when you hire someone, you know, have them do a test project. 
you would recommend maybe say, take a look at my social profiles, give me an idea of what the strategy would be and, and write like three posts so mm-hmm. that you would see how they're writing and see if it aligns. Like if you read it and you're like, yeah, that sounds like me or no, that doesn't sound like me. Right. And yeah. kind of test it out. And I think the thing with social too, though, is that it takes time. So you really like, you have to make sure it's the right, you know, you like their test project, but you almost have to give a, a solid 90 days to really see, is this resonating with my people? Am I getting more engagement? Am I getting conversions? Right. Cause it, it just is one of those things that it doesn't happen overnight. No. And from a social media stand, like marketer standpoint, I go into certain posts knowing, or I guess not knowing, but understanding that this could be a total flop. Like if I want to try something, cause I go, okay, well, this is, this is what we're aiming to do here. Let me try this. This, this could be a good way to get some engagement, or this could be a good angle to take. I'm going to try this approach. Sometimes it goes great. Other times it's a total flop. And that's the thing is if you're viewing it from that standpoint of, oh, I'm expecting all these big things to happen now that I've outsourced this. Well, you have to know that your social media manager is learning the lay of the land around what's going to work with your brand and your profile and your audience. And um, that full 90 day period gives you an actual snapshot of what can be done versus if you're looking at just like a two week period, you're not going to have enough information to go off of to know if that person's really moving the needle or not. And I know for us, sometimes it's so funny because we have a post and we're like, oh, this is going to be so good. People are going to love it. And it's like crickets. And then we have this other, like our, we had that use a scheduler post and we thought that was just going to be the most normal, like, of course, use a scheduler. And there were like 30 comments. Yeah. And we're like, okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this. I wanted to know about using a scheduler. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for seven years now and I still like, there's posts where I go like, uh, I, am I phoning it in on this one? Like this feels too easy. Like that, when I crafted that post, I was like, I was like, this feels, this feels like too easy, but I was like, it got brought up like, cause I'm constant as a social media manager. Like this is another one of my jobs. I'm always looking like I'm doing a lot of listening and looking around the ecosystem of our audience and going, okay, I've seen this, this thread pop up a couple times or a couple people asking the same question. Let's post about it and see, because if one person or two people has that question, more are going to as well. And to me, it felt so, and this is what I, I preach this all the time, like inside Post with Purpose, I had to take some of my own advice where I was like, things that come so naturally to you do not come naturally to others. Mm-hmm. So for me, I was like, okay, social media scheduler, you know, sure. And then it went great. And it's, it's one of those things you just have to test and try and see how it goes. You never truly know how it's going to go, but that's where knowing your people is what's most important. Because if you know your people, even if it's kind of a flop, it's like, it's not like you're sending anyone away because they feel like, oh, wow, what are you talking about now? This is totally off color for you or something like that. Yeah. So where would you suggest trying to find a social media manager? If, if a spa is looking, is that something that's posted on indeed? Is that something that's like, like where, where would you find a social media manager? Yeah. So that's a great question. Cause there's so many sources now, I feel like, um, just with the online remote worker boom, um, I would definitely post on indeed that's a great place to find good job applicants. People who are actively like looking for employment are going there, but also look through your network of people. You probably know other business owners who have teams or um, who have done outsourcing before, and they may have some really great contacts that they can put, put you in touch with. And one thing I will say though, is no matter how you get in touch with people, whether it's reaching out to, you know, your network Um, I would not do that blanket, like Facebook post of, does anyone know someone that does this? I would do that personal reach out of like, this person really has a business that seems like it's doing well. And I've been watching what they're doing. They seem like they like their Instagram profile. I like their, yeah. Like sending them a message and saying, Hey, who are you using? Um, and then finding out, then having a call and say like, is this person a good fit with my brand? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then the kind of third option, if you don't get any kind of good applicants from there, would be searching for some type of a social media uh, education company or a social media manager type of community. I know there's a new platform called Creatively. I believe it's called, if you just Google it, it's newer, but um, you can post job descriptions up there for creative type of work and social media managers are going to be on a platform like that. So that's another place to kind of post your, or on LinkedIn also posting a job description there. And no matter what though, I mean, put someone through your interview process, like have the solid job description that gives someone a tactical thing that they need to do, have them do the test project. I don't like care if it's your second cousin and you think they're cool and they say they're a social media manager. If they actually want the job, they will do the test project. Um, and if they happen to be related to you and they work out, that's great. But otherwise, you know, I think so many people do that thing of like, I need help now. And they're really desperate to get help. They just want to get things off their plate, but you will, Save it's yourself. a band-aid. It's a band-aid yeah. when you do it that way. And and that causes just more pain down mm-hmm. the road if you don't do it right from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. You will save yourself a lot of um, time and headache from like having to do that initial communication and trying to get someone onboarded and then just to not have it work out soon after. And that could still happen too, but that's less likely to happen when you actually follow the job process all the way through. Very good. So if you guys have questions about hiring a social media manager versus hiring a social media VA, and I I guess I should say also, we always highly recommend the um, 90 day VA hiring a VA. We've got a, we'll include a link below this video, but Esther Inman um, runs that organization. And that also is a great place to look for a social media VA. You may be lucky and may find someone that could fill that role as a social media manager. Um, But for a VA, 100%, that's a great place to look. So uh, again, head over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group if you want to continue the conversation. And we will catch you in the next episode. 